So what you're supposed to do now is now that we've got the forge lit, we can make the key. Now how do you know how to make the key? I'm going to show you that. Where's the mutus lever? To show you a little bit of how it works. Okay, it's this picture, see? Now you'll notice these pictures, they look exactly, uh, it looks rather like this key. Where's this? This? Right, right, right. Now that's going to be your clue as to how to mold the key in the forge here. Okay, let me show you how it works. See this thingy? See this one here? Ha huh, ha. Huh? See it? See it? You see it? Ha huh, ha huh, ha. Huh? Do you see it? Do you see it? That's uh, the same thingy that's on the middle of a uh, Corbin's coat of arms. Now look at the coat of arms. See how we've got two lines here on each side of the uh, Latin phrase? That means... By pulling out different plugs... That means because this is the spot of Corbin's coat of arms, we're going to have to make the mold with two lines there. Huh? 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 So you, you'll actually would have to go back and forth between all the coats of arms and the mutus lever to figure it out. Fortunately, I, I'm not going to do that. I have all the solutions written down here. It's this. Ooh, I believe this is another cross. This is a straight line. This is a straight line. I think this is another cross. Straight line. Cross. Do. Now I think that's it, but seeing as this is right near the end of the game... Hi. I should get going. Bye. Rather than running off and uh, solving the uh, mystery, or uh, putting in the key, I'm going to spend a... Uh... Whoa, wait a minute. Did the gargoyle just wink at me when I open, when I close the door of this place? Hey, it winks! Cool! What I'm going to do now is call everybody. I'm going to have fun just having phone conversations with what everybody. What that? Ooh. Where'd this come from? What's this? Doom shall come on swift wings to thee who has seen forbidden things. Ooh. This looks like it came from a wolf. Freaky. Very freaky. But in any case, I haven't called people very much in this game, so that's what I'm going to do. This video and the next video is probably just going to be nothing but phone calls. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Let's call Hugh. Hugh. Here. Hello, Mr. Pendleton. This is Nancy Drew. I'm the one who's visiting Linda. You know, from the United States, across the pond. Yes, of course. Are you at Blackmore? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am, and I've yes, talked to Linda. Of course. Good for you, because frankly, that's something I've been quite unable to do lately. These temper tantrums of hers make rational discourse well nigh impossible. Possible. She gets angry for no reason? Absolutely none. We'll be talking on the phone about the weather or Jane's lessons or something equally innocuous, and suddenly she'll be bellowing at me and slamming the phone down. There must be something that sets oh. her off. Everything sets her off. I promise you, these rages of hers are totally uncalled for and quite... Unbearable. I love her dearly, but she is making things very difficult. I understand that Mrs. Drake is your aunt? Yes, Aunt Letitia. We're not very close, however. She's always been rather aloof, much more interested in being a Penvelin than a person, if you know what I mean. Does hmm. Linda get along with her? As far as I know, yes, although I have caught my aunt eyeing Linda strangely at times. And of course, there's the six-month habitation clause. The what? Yeah. According to the Penvelin rules of inheritance, the spouse of Blackmore Manor's current owner, that would be Linda since I'm the current owner, the spouse mm -hmm. of the current owner must reside in the manor for at least six months. Should she or he leave the manor before six months is up, ownership of one half of the estate immediately passes to the next legal heir. And that would be Mrs. Drake. Correct. Interesting. I met your daughter Jane. Quite the bundle of energy, isn't she? Yes. I get the feeling that she's a little lonely. Yeah. I'm sure she is, what with a private tutor instead of school, and Linda being... under the weather. And coming back to Blackmore no doubt reminds her of her real mother. Renee and I were divorced almost two years ago. Jane went into a bit of a tailspin for a while, but she's come to adore Linda. She's been calling hmm. her mummy since the day we were married. That's nice. Have you spent much time on your father's computer? The one that's in the library? I dare say I've never touched it. 
Mathematics, computer science, linguistics, all the things that fascinated my scholarly father bored me to tears. He gave up on me quite early on. With Jane, however, it was a different story. What do you mean? From the day she was born, my father doted on her, far more than he ever doted on me. Read to her, bought her books, games. Truth be told, I was a bit jealous. Hmm. He passed away when she was still a toddler, so it's unlikely she remembers all the attention he showered on her. But I do, and I still find it so out of character as to be mystifying. What do you know about the secret passageways here at Blackmoor? Only that they're hundreds of years old and are undoubtedly dangerously decayed. Jane has been ordered to stay out of them. Fortunately, it's highly doubtful she'll even figure out how to get in them. How many passageways Aww. are there? One or two, I suppose. I'm really not sure. I vaguely recall blundering into one when I was a child, but it was very dark and ended rather abruptly. And I found the whole experience to be rather unremarkable. When I told my Aww. father what I'd discovered, he merely shrugged. Agreed that the passageways were dark, decrepit, and pointless. Suggested that I stay out of them, and that was the end of it. Oh, okay. Are you the one who hired Ethel to be Jane's tutor? No, that was my aunt's doing. Mrs. Drake? Yes, she absolutely insisted. She said the Bossonies had been tutoring the Penvalins for centuries, and that I was duty-bound to continue the tradition. She kept saying that it's what her brother would have wanted. Her brother being Alan, your father? Yes, and I must say, I've been quite pleased with Ethel. She's a fine young woman, and Jane seems to enjoy her lessons, strange as they are. What do you mean by strange? Ethel demands that Jane study history, obscure history, Penvalin history. They discuss events that even I, as a direct descendant, find inconsequential, to say nothing of deadly dull. Hmm. Who's Uncle Roger? Interesting. That would be my ex-wife's brother. Yeah. Do you have any idea what he'd have in common with a guinea pig? A guinea pig? Well, seeing as most guinea pigs are covered with hair and Roger's pate is rather sparsely populated, in my opinion, he would have nothing in common with a guinea pig, save perhaps its IQ. Ooh. Why do you ask? It's a long story. Yeah. What do you know about the Beast of Blackmore? Yeah. Pure medieval fiction, the product of little minds in an era of dangerously little education. I have forbidden Ethel to so much as mention it to Jane. What did you hear about it? The man doing research in the library, Nigel Mukherjee? Another of my aunt's ideas. The fact that the Penvalins have never had a book written about them has been a perpetual source of social embarrassment for her. Do you know much about him? He was recommended by a friend, and he has assured us over and over that the book he publishes will cast only a positive light upon the Penvalin name. Although, come to think of it, I never have seen the contract he agreed to sign, which was to put that promise in writing. 